Hi everyone. In today's episode of Free Invented, we'll be discussing the topic of charcuterie boards. But before we dive into the topic, let's define the term charcuterie. Charcuterie is a French term for the art of preparing and presenting cured meats and other sweet and savory snacks. It's a fun and tasty way to entertain guests at a party or event. To create a charcuterie board, you'll need to gather a variety of cured meats, cheese, and accoutrements, like fruit, vegetables, crackers, or bread, to complement the flavor of the cheese. Whether you have a limited budget or want to go all out, this guide will help you create an epic charcuterie board that will impress everyone. Stay tuned. Did you know that there are over 1,800 different types of cheese in the world? And there are almost as many ways to classify them. Cheeses can be classified by the type of milk used, their age, the country of origin, and even the texture. While it's not possible to include all 1,800 types of cheese on your cheese board, you can select a few types to provide a wide range of flavors and appeal to a variety of taste preferences. Today, I'll be sharing some of my favorite cheeses that I think should be included on everyone's cheese board. Goat cheese is often described as having a mild, earthy, buttery, and tart flavor. Some people love the distinct taste of goat cheese, while others are not as fond of it. But no matter your personal preference, there are many varieties of goat cheese to choose from. For example, you can include a goat cheese covered with raspberries for a sweet and tasty option, or try a goat cheese covered with ground black pepper for a savory and slightly spicy choice. Don't forget to include a plain goat cheese for those who like to taste the natural flavor of the cheese. Next on the list is brie cheese. Brie is also made with goat milk, but for some French reason, you cannot call it goat cheese, you have to call it brie. For example, this double cream French brie cheese from Normandy contains up to 60 to 75% butter fat. It has a buttery, smooth, spreadable texture and a rich mouthfeel that are characteristic to this style of cheese. Brie is delicious with honey and walnuts. Another cheese to consider is extra old cheddar for those who love cheddar cheese. And let's be honest, who doesn't? This Canadian cheddar cheese has been aged for over a year and has a sharp, nutty flavor and a bold aftertaste that even kids would appreciate. From Spain, I always like to include a hard sheep's milk cheese called Manchego. It has an intense, zesty taste and a crumbly texture that's rich, full, and slightly salty at the finish. No charcuterie board is complete without a chunk of Parmigiano Reggiano, the most famous and popular Italian cheese. It has a sharp, complex, fruity, nutty taste with a strong, savory flavor and a slightly gritty texture. Finally, I always like to include a piece of blue cheese on my cheese board. Blue cheese is pungent with a distinctive salty and sharp flavor that can sometimes be sweet. It's semi-soft, crumbly, and creamy in texture. While some people may be put off by the strong smell of blue cheese, others love its salty taste. And whether you love it or not, it's important to include a blue cheese on your board because it adds a unique flavor and appeals to a wide range of taste preferences. By including these types of cheeses, or perhaps a few others, you can create a cheese board that has a wide spectrum of flavors and tastes that your guests will love. The second most important aspect of creating a cheese board is adding some kind of meat or protein. To cover this, you'll want to include some cured meats like the ones I have here. While you could go to the local grocery store and buy yourself a pack with a variety of prosciuttos and other cured meats, I like to do things a bit differently. For example, here I have some beef bologna that is delicious and sure to be a hit with everyone, including kids of course. I also have some turkey breast slices which are mild in flavor and always a crowd pleaser. And for something a little bit different and unique, I have some Montreal smoked beef. While it's unusual to include this one on a cheese board, I like to mix things up and add something different every time I make a cheese board. This Canadian cured meat is delicious. The secret is in the blend of savory spices like whole peppercorns, coriander, mustard seeds, and garlic. On the more traditional side, I have some slices of pepperoni, which I consider to be a staple on any cheese board. After all, who doesn't love pepperoni? After gathering the cheeses and cured meats, it is time to consider the other accoutrements such as fruits, nuts, honey, jam, crackers, and so on. There are many types of fruits that work well on a cheese board. 
grapes, for example, are a staple and come in a variety of colors such as green, red, and black. Personally, I like to include two different types of grapes, green and red or black, but you can just go with one if you prefer. If you have to choose just one type of grapes, go with green, as they tend to go well with most cheese flavors. Berries are also a great choice for a cheese board. Strawberries add a pop of color and taste delicious with cheese, especially goat cheese. Blackberries are also tasty and a hit with many people. For something a little more exotic, consider adding a dragon fruit to your cheese board. This Southeast Asian fruit is delicious and adds the visually striking elements to your board. Of course, you can also include fresh figs or other fruits that you enjoy. In addition to the fruits, don't forget to include some olives on your cheese board. Castle Vetrano olives, for example, are a popular choice for charcuterie boards. These Sicilian green olives are famous for their green color, irresistible buttery sweet flavor, and crisp meaty texture. They are a hit with many people. Another option is genuine Greek whole colossal olives, which have a complex flavor that's sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and pungent. These olives are perfect for entertaining or as an indulgent midweek treat. I also like to include some fresh honey on my cheese board. I bought this honey from a local Canadian farm and it's so delicious. Honey is a must-have on any charcuterie board because it pairs well with brie cheese and adds a touch of sweetness. I have promised myself that I would buy one of those fancy honey dippers for drizzling honey on my favorite cheese, but I have yet to do it. Maybe one day. I also never skip including some Turkish jam on my cheese board. This Turkish strawberry jam is so delicious and always a hit with those who love jam. I like to choose a brand that includes whole fruits because it has more flavor and nutrients. In the world of accoutrements, don't forget to include some nuts and dried fruits. For the nuts, you don't need to include more than one type, but for me, I like to add more than one type to the cheese board because I love nuts and I hope my wife doesn't take that statement as an offense. Pistachios add a savory flavor, and it's always fun for me to pick the ones without the shell and eat them. Other great choices for nuts include pecans, which have a sweet and buttery flavor, and walnuts, which are a staple on any cheese board and are especially delicious with brie cheese and honey. Dried fruits are also a great addition to a cheese board. They add a touch of sweetness and a pop of color. Try including some apricots, figs, or cranberries for a tasty and visually appealing touch. Here, I have some Syrian dried apricots and Egyptian prunes. These fruits are delicious and pair well with all types of cheese. Prunes in particular are meaty and sweet when dried and add a ton of flavor to any cheese board. Tomatoes are another favorite of mine to include on a charcuterie board because they are so much fun to eat with cheese. When shopping for tomatoes, consider getting a small pack of mixed cherry tomatoes. These packs often include yellow, orange, red, and black cherry tomatoes, all of which are delicious, shiny, and clean. They each have their own unique flavor and add a fun element to your cheese board. Orange cherry tomatoes are known for their inherently sweet flavor and are a hit with many people. They can be eaten fresh and add a sweet touch to the flavor of your cheeses. Black cherry tomatoes also have a fine, rich flavor with a sweet, tangy, and subtly nutty taste. They look beautiful mixed with other colored cherry tomatoes and are fun to eat on any cheese board. Red cherry tomatoes taste similar to other fresh tomatoes, but because of their small size, their flavor can be a little more concentrated and sweet. They have a thin, snap appeal and a very juicy center, which is why they are a hit with people of all ages. In addition to the cheeses, cured meats, fruits, and other accoutrements, it's important to include some crisps or crackers to add texture to your cheese board. This way, you can cater to a wide range of tastes and preferences. First up, I have some cranberry crackers made with whole wheat. These crackers have a rich flavor and a hint of sweetness from the cranberries. Next, I have a rosemary raisin almond cracker. This cracker has a crunchy texture from the nuts and a savory aroma from the rosemary, with a hint of sweetness from the raisins. It's one of my absolute favorites. I also have a vanilla and black pepper fig cracker. This cracker is sweet from the figs and spicy from the black pepper. It's a delicious combination of flavors that really works well together. For those who are gluten-free, it's important to include some crackers that they can enjoy. Here, I have added three types of gluten-free crackers. A multigrain cracker, a sesame cracker made with rice, and a barbecue-flavored cracker made with sweet potatoes. 
With these options, you can cover a wide range of tastes and ensure that everyone at your party has something that they will like and enjoy. One important element to include on a cheese board is a delicious baguette, a Parisian-style baguette baked on a stone and made with authentic European starters is a perfect choice. This baguette has a crispy golden crust and a moist airy interior, thanks to its long fermentation process. It's made with just six simple ingredients and has a fully developed flavor. Slice the baguette with a serrated knife and serve it with your cheese board. This will make it easy for your guests to grab a piece or two and enjoy it with their favorite cheeses. You can't go wrong with a Parisian style baguette on your charcuterie board. Don't forget to include the right utensils and knives on your charcuterie board to help your guests easily enjoy all the delicious items you've prepared. A set of minimalist design cheese knives can add a touch of class to your board. And here, I'm gonna show you a spatula-like cheese slicer, where a cheese plane with an extremely sharp blade is great for slicing semi-soft to semi-hard cheeses like Fontina and Havarti. If your spreaders are useful for spreading soft cheeses like ricotta or cream cheese on bread or crackers. A knife with a sharp and pointed tip that can pierce the cheese is ideal for hard cheeses like Parmigiano-Reggiano. A multi-purpose perforated knife is great for slicing through most cheeses, including soft ones like Brie and Camembert. With some specially designed holes, this knife will prevent soft cheeses from sticking and messing up your entire life. A medium hard cheese knife with a forked tip is perfect for slicing and serving medium hard cheeses like cheddar and emmental, or as the French say it, a montal. Finally, a thin blade knife is ideal for slicing through soft cheeses like goat cheese by preventing the cheese from sticking to the knife and again messing up your entire life. Having a full range of utensils and cheese knives is a luxury, but even having a few of these on your board will make it easier and more fun for everyone to enjoy their cheeses. Building a beautiful charcuterie board doesn't require a landscaping engineer. All you need is a little bit of creativity and an assortment of delicious ingredients. To begin, I like to arrange my cheeses in a circular shape, starting with flavors that range from sweet to savory. I will start with a variety of goat cheeses, including a sweet cranberry flavor, a spicy peppercorn flavor, and a plain flavor. Next, I like to add a wheel of brie cheese, making sure to slice a piece so that my guests can easily enjoy it. Then, I'll include cubes of cheddar cheese, a piece of manchego, and a big chunk of parmigiano reggiano. Finally, I'll add some blue cheese for a bold, savory flavor. On one side of the board, I like to place a jar of honey for drizzling over the cheese. On the other side, I'll add a jar of jam for a sweet and tangy contrast. As a special touch, I always include a dragon fruit in the center of the board. To serve this delicious fruit, I cut it in half, slice one half with the skin on, and then scoop the other half and cut the flesh into cubes. Place the cubes back in the empty peel for a colorful and eye-catching display. Next, I'll add the Castle Vetrano olives and the Colossal olives to ramekins and place them on the board. Then, the grapes, strawberries, blackberries to fill in the gaps. When making your own cheese board, use the cheeses to create retaining walls for the meats. Fold slices of the bologna and shingle them between two different types of cheeses. Then, do the same with the turkey bologna. Stack the Montreal smoked beef and finally add the pepperoni slices to the board. Remember to distribute the items at different locations on the board to make it more visually appealing and give everyone at the charcuterie board a chance to find something delicious. To make your charcuterie board even more exciting, consider varying the placement and arrangement of your crackers. You can scatter some crackers around the edge of the board and pile others in the center. You can also arrange the crackers in a fan shape or stack them in small towers. Don't forget to clearly label any gluten-free crackers to ensure that all of your guests can enjoy them. Next, add some pistachios to the cheese board. Sometimes, I like to place them beside the salty cheeses like the Parmigiano Reggiano and the blue cheese because they have similar flavor notes. However, there are no rules. You can arrange them however you like. Place some walnuts beside the brie cheese. Many people enjoy eating brie with walnuts and a drizzle of honey, so placing them together makes it easy for guests to enjoy this combination. I also recommend placing the honey jar beside the brie for the same reason. On another side of the board, add some pecans. I typically like to place them beside the manchego cheese because I enjoy eating them together. After the nuts, add some dried fruit to the cheese board. Start by adding prunes and then sprinkle some dried apricot on the other side. 
these fruits are delicious and will add a nice touch to the cheese board. Finally, add some colorful cherry tomatoes to the cheese board and people will never ignore them. I know that the cheese board is now super full, but that's what really makes it super exciting and fun to eat. If you have a larger cheese board, you can always add more items such as different fruits, different types of tomatoes, different types of olives and cheeses, and cured meats to make it more fun and interesting. For me, a charcuterie board this size will feed at least 20 people. As a final touch, add more tomatoes, strawberries, and blackberries on top of everything. This will make the charcuterie board look super packed and very exciting. And there you have it guys, a beautiful and delicious charcuterie board that has something for everyone, from sweet to savory, and all the different textures and flavors in between. I hope you enjoyed this video, and that it gave you some inspiration for your own charcuterie creations. Please tell me your opinion in the comments below and share a picture of your own charcuterie board with me on Food Basics Reinvented Facebook and Instagram pages. Please subscribe so you don't miss any of my new videos. Thank you so much for watching. Bon appétit.